Hello everyone, this is Geo Echidna, and I'd like to present Weapons of Battlefield 5 in real life, the Type 99 Arisaka. I'll be comparing the Type 99 in the game to the actual and functional wooden steel firearms. The rifles you'll see in this video were both brought back from Japan by my grandfather after the 1945 surrender, so these aren't just pieces of history, but also emotionally important family heirlooms. The Type 99 was also one of the first rifles I ever fired, so I definitely have nostalgia for these guns. However, I will do my best to put my personal bias for the Type 99 aside, as I critically compare this former Japanese battle implement to its representation in Battlefield 5, starting with the historical backstory. Ah, Japan. The land of the rising sun, bizarre video games, lobster vending machines, and anime. But it's easy to forget that only about 80 years ago, Japan was a brutal and imposing empire that had much of Southeast Asia under its control. While it was late to the party, Japan rapidly industrialized and militarized during the Meiji era, becoming the only non-Western world power in fewer than three decades. Throughout this period, the Japanese were using the Arisaka series of rifles, beginning with the Type 30 in 1897. The Type 30's development was headed by the Imperial Japanese Colonel Arisaka Nariakira, and his goal was to analyze modern firearms trends throughout the world. While it performed adequately enough in the Russo-Japanese War, it presented some safety and reliability concerns, and the Japanese undertook a redesign for the Type 30 in 1905. The chief designer on this project was Nambu Kojiro, and the new rifle was referred to as the Type 38. Despite being referred to in the West as an Arisaka, in truth Colonel Arisaka had little to do with this upgrade's design. The Type 38 would see its first real action in World War I, where the British and Russian empires bought thousands of them to supplement their own rifle production. All in all, the Type 38 was a perfectly adequate rifle, and for a couple of decades, Japan saw little reason to upgrade. However, in the late 1930s, they seemed to have a change of heart. The Type 30 and 38 rifles were chambered for the 65 by 50 mm semi-rimmed cartridge, and by most accounts, it was a pretty solid round. But during the Second Sino-Japanese War, the Imperial Japanese Army encountered Chinese troops armed with weapons chambered for the potent 8 mm Mauser round. The 8x57mm cartridge was larger and had a greater minimum effective range, and superior penetration of cover like trees and walls. Additionally, by this point most other nations had switched to quote-unquote full-power ammunition, such as the United States with the 30 6 the Russians with the 7.62x54, and the British with the 303, and Japan found this as an excuse to catch up. The Imperial Japanese military set out once again to upgrade their service rifle, with the project also being spearheaded by Nambu. I'm thinking I'm back! Interestingly, the Japanese already had a full power round that they had been using in the Type 92 machine gun since the early 30s, the 7.7x58mm semi-rimmed. After some testing, Nambu and his team decided to scale up and rework the Type 38 into a slightly newer design, using an updated, rimless version of the 7.7x58. The final prototype would come to be known as the Type 99. Okay, cool, but what about the Type 99's representation in Battlefield 5, and how does it compare to the real thing? Well, all in all, I think DICE did a great job. The model for the Type 99 in Battlefield 5 is beautiful and highly detailed. There has never been a video game representation of this rifle that has looked this good, ever. The Type 99 in Battlefield 5 more or less looks, sounds, and feels like the real thing, which is not something video game developers often achieve, or even attempt. However, it's obvious that DICE took some liberties portraying this weapon in the game, both in terms of presentation and gameplay. The most noticeable visual oversight is the presence of the bent bolt handle. While a sniper variant in this configuration did exist, it wasn't exactly handed out to everyone, and by and large most soldiers had the standard Type 99 with a straight 90 degree bolt handle. The other glaring oversights are the lack of the monopod, anti-aircraft sights, and the dust cover on the in-game model. Contrary to popular belief, these accessories were absolutely not abandoned by Japanese soldiers who didn't want to carry them around. 
Regarding World War II, the Japanese were kind of awkwardly intense about the whole thing, and carelessly defacing the property of the Emperor could get you severely beaten or even shot. The monopod was actually quite useful at stabilizing the rifle while aiming, and the dust cover was effective at keeping mud and sand out of the action. But I mean, come on, what kind of an idiot would try to shoot down a plane with a bolt-action rifle? The Type 99 in Battlefield 5 also takes some gameplay liberties as to how it functions and performs compared to the real rifle. Battlefield has never been a perfectly realistic depiction of warfare, and of course there's nothing wrong with that. The real bolt-action rifle has a fairly smooth action, even with its antiquated straight bolt handle. Its iron sights also lend themselves well to rapid reacquisition of one sight picture. But in Battlefield 5, the player can fire this thing pretty rapidly, even before your avatar can look down the sights on subsequent shots. Speaking of sights, Battlefield 5's Type 99 has a much more open rear sight than the actual gun, presumably to make it easier for players to aim. This is what the Type 99 sight picture looks like in real life. Also, it should be known that World War II era bolt action rifles are much, much harder to use in reality than in any video game. The Type 99's large cartridge produces fairly stout recoil for this comparatively light rifle, and it is legitimately painful to shoot after about 15 rounds. Type 99's, like most wartime rifles, are also not amazingly accurate, and definitely not as much as Battlefield 5 makes them out to be. Most bolt-action service rifles of the era can produce a roughly 10 centimeter shot grouping at 100 meters, which is still perfectly adequate for warfare. But unlike in Battlefield 5, in real life you aren't going to be consistently popping off headshots at 200 meters while standing up, because that's really fucking hard. However, I am fully aware that 90% of the Battlefield community would not find a realistic depiction of World War II firearms very fun, and indeed I am one of that 90%. I can only play realistic World War II shooters like Hell Let Loose for so long before I punch a fucking hole in my monitor. All in all, while the Type 99 is not a perfect portrayal of the Japanese battle implement, it is fun to use, and that's what matters. Okay, now for the main attraction, firing the Type 99. Here is some commentary-free shooting footage followed by gameplay. Of course, we can't talk about the Imperial Japanese Army without also mentioning their acute fascination with bladed weapons. 
Specifically, I'm talking about the absolutely massive Type 30 bayonet, which was designed for the original Type 30 Arisaka back in 1897 and was largely unmodified throughout its entire history of service. It's basically a miniature fucking sword, but I'm totally not complaining. Thankfully, DICE had the foresight to include this in Battlefield 5 as the final specialization for the Type 99, so you too can engage in a classic bonsai charge if you so desire. The bayonet charge mechanic is still pretty jank, and half the time you just kind of glitch into success, but it is morbidly funny when the blade actually connects to the poor schmuck on the other end. When all is said and done, the Type 99 is a solid addition to Battlefield 5 and fits well with the Pacific Theater update. I just don't know if I'd want to use the Type 99 over other weapons in the Pacific update, especially since we now have the M1 Garand, which is the greatest of all time. Nevertheless, the Type 99 is a perfectly good option for the Recon class that will do you well if you take the time to learn it. Despite being unquestionably obsolete even in its time, I consider the Type 99 to be one of the best bolt actions of the entire war. However, I need to make something very clear. This video is not in any way an endorsement of the Empire of Japan or their ideals. World War II era Japan was an imperialist fascist ethnostate that committed countless atrocities to the peoples of Southeast Asia and the Allies, and there is no metric by which I consider them to have been a force for good. However, the Type 99 rifle was merely a well-designed tool that happened to come from a shitty far-right empire, and I could admire its engineering completely separately from the ideology of Imperial Japan. Despite its sketchy fascist history, the Type 99 Arisaka is still one of my favorite bolt actions of all time. Smart design choices and great ergonomics make this rifle a joy to shoot, and despite its obsolescence, it's still a well-built machine that will probably still be firing in a hundred years. Type 99s are just really cool rifles, as well as tangible pieces of history, and they make for a great addition to the Battlefield series. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please consider liking and subscribing, and click on the bell to receive notifications about future videos. Geo Echidna, signing off.